What's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of the EKD Show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Last week, we just kicked things off. Loved all the positive comments. And again, thank you guys for watching. So this week, we have a packed show for you guys. We're going to be talking March Madness, NBA, MLB, Masters. As you guys see, I put Tiger Woods up in the background here because it is Masters week. We got a Q&A at the end. And then, of course, I'm now going to give you my EKD play of the day. So that means you have to watch this entire show to get there. Let's start off with March Madness. That is now wrapped up. And honestly, I will say the women's game was 10 times more entertaining than the men's game. So we're going to start off with the ladies. You know, LSU got the win 102 to 85. They covered as a three and a half point underdog as well as the over cashing. Now everybody's talking about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and uh, the internet is the internet. It obviously blew up with everybody talking about the hand in the face, what Angel Reese did at the end of the game to Caitlin Clark. But for some context, Caitlin Clark had done this against some of the players in South Carolina, but she had done it during the game while Angel Reese did it after the game. And that was basically what people had an issue with. And I think Holly Rowe, who was reporting at this game, put out one of the best tweets that I saw in terms of this. She put people hating on Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark Stop. Unapologetically confident young women should be celebrated, not hated. So I thought that was a great tweet, not to mention, let's just overall look at this for college sports in terms of women. This is just one of the best things that we could see. 9.9 million viewers. That was more viewers than the NBA All-Star Game. This was great for college sports, great for women in the sport. And honestly, I cannot wait to watch Caitlin Clark next season, as well as Angel Reese. Not to mention UConn's going to have Paige Bukers back. So I do think it will be a big thing for them. And also, if I was them, I'd be starting a merch company doing the You Can't See Me right away. All right. There would already be T-shirts being posted for that. But all around, it was great to watch the women's side of things. And then for the men, again, it was a snoozer for me. UConn won. They covered. In fact, they won 76 to 59. They were up by 16 points in the first half. I, I guys, I just, I wasn't into it. Great win for UConn, happy for them. But um, yeah, they opened up as the betting favor for next season, 12 to one. It's not something I'm looking to bet at this moment. In fact, I think you would be absolutely out of your mind if you thought it was a great idea to bet into the futures market right now for next season's men's college hoops. But one of the biggest betting stories that I have to say from the last week has to be in the NIT semifinal, Wisconsin versus North Texas. So the total for this game closed at 114 and a half. With 70 total points scored in the first half, then the Mean Green held Wisconsin to 13 in the second half without a point for the final nine minutes and seven seconds. The under cashed on this one. People were freaking out online. I mean, 13 points in the second half of a game is just absolutely tragic. But as betters, we know anything, quite literally anything can happen in terms of these odds. And now time to talk about the Masters. And everybody is super amped up for this. And guys, there's going to be 18 people coming over from Live, so it's going to be interesting to see how some of those golfers look. And don't make fun of me for the way that I say golf. It is an East Coast thing. I cannot change the way that I say it. But there are some trends that I want to point out for you guys. So in terms of long shots, 11 straight winners were 50 to 1 or shorter. The last betting favor to win the Masters was Tiger Woods back in 2005. And 13 straight winners ranked in the top 30 in the world ranking. So to be honest, am I a huge better in terms of golf? No, but it's the Masters. And if I was picking somebody to win, I'm going to go with Rory McIlroy. He has four major titles. He's just missing the green jacket. Again, it is very incredibly difficult to pick who is going to win something outright. You can keep betting into the Masters over the first couple of days. So maybe you try to find value on some guys that are doing well that you didn't expect or some guys that you think you can get a better price for. But I'm gonna go with Rory McIlroy to win it all. And guys, I, I don't know if this is because I'm a female and I've seen people in relationships with people that like to golf. Men that golf are, are semi, semi-useless. Number one, useless. And on a Sunday, I should say, useless on a Sunday, they're constantly practicing their golf swing in public or not, whether they have a club or not. I think it's the most bizarre thing. And also I've noticed as I've gotten older, you can pick out somebody who likes golf based on what they're wearing out at a bar. Like people that go golf then decide to go home, shower, get ready to go out and put back on another golf outfit. And it's just, it's all around just too, too much. But nonetheless, the Masters is coming up and keep an eye on some of the odds because you can try to get a better price throughout the weekend.
And let's switch it over to Major League Baseball. It is back. Baseball is back, baby. Am I super excited about it? It's just another thing that I have to deal with at this point, okay? Some people are super into Major League Baseball, and some people like me, it's just not not my favorite sport. But if we're looking at the odds in terms of the futures, you got the Astros, Yankees, Blue Jays, Rays, and Mariners all listed at 10 to 1 odds or less. But guys, it's a long season. I would not be betting into futures right now. It's just way too early. But there's one trend that I want to point out. The Marlins team total is 4-0-1 right now, okay, towards the under. Last season, the last 52 games, the Marlins team total went under 36 13 and 3. This is a trend you need to jump on. You need to keep riding. You just blindly ride it, okay? Because you're going to be up most likely through the first half, maybe the whole entire season. But I did want to uh, point out that trend because honestly, it is a little bit crazy. But since Major League Baseball started, of course, I had to think about what's something I enjoy at a baseball game. And one of those things, obviously, is hot dogs. So then that led me to the thought of condiments. So I wasn't surprised ketchup was the favorite out of the ones that I had posted in the channel. Mustard second, chili third. Um, I think that's absolutely foul. Um, hot chili on a hot dog on a hot day sounds disturbing. Uh, onions and relish, uh, 7% and 5% there. But I was surprised by a lot of people in the comments really talking badly about ketchup. I didn't realize how many people hate ketchup. I'm not really a fan of ketchup. My favorite condiment is honey, which you don't put on hot dogs. But if I had to pick one here, I feel like you got to go mustard. And also, I'm just really, again, skeeved by the chili thought. I don't know. Hot chili, hot day, beans. I think there's beans in chili. I don't know. It's disgusting. So I would have to go with mustard if I was picking a condiment for my hot dog. All right, let's switch it over to the NBA. Things are starting to calm down. The regular season is winding down. And there's been some games that have been quite important to see how these teams would match up in the postseason and one of those was the celtics versus the bucks celtics got the win 140 to 99 but i wanted to quickly point out a snippet that brian windhorse had put out and said on first take because it really resonates with sports betters this is why for- i would never personally wager on an nba game you could maybe convince me on individual props, maybe convince me on halftime wages or whatever. But this week, we saw the Celtics give up 130 points in Washington on a game where they didn't have Bradley Beal. So what Brian Windhorst was discussing here was the fact that the Boston Celtics gave up 130 points to the Washington Wizards without Bradley Beal in that game. And then the following game, they held the Milwaukee Bucks to 99 points. Now, we know teams like to show up in important games, and I understand that. But from a betting perspective, this is incredibly difficult to know who is going to show up and why. And this is why I agree that sometimes you just got to look at the player prop market. You got to deep dive into some of those those numbers. I know it takes more time than just looking at a spread, looking at a total, but we are at that point in the season where it's really difficult to give out picks, especially in the NBA. There's a lot of important games and you can focus on those, but still, I'm looking at the player props rather than the spreads and the totals going forward. Here's something that I've wanted to recently talk about, and that is Dylan Brooks and his outfits. If you guys don't know, he's on the Memphis Grizzlies. He's averaging 14 points, three rebounds, three assists, and this guy is never not in the media this season. I mean, it has been crazy, but we have to go over some of these fits. I'm going to rate them one to 10, not one to five, one to 10. We're gonna start off with most likely his most controversial look. This one was the Stone Cold Steve Austin fit. and. Um, Again, rating this 1 through 10, I would have to give this a 4.5. And I feel like a 4.5 is kind of high for this. And the reason being is this man knows how to get publicity. Whether you want to look at him or talk about him, you kind of have to talk about him when he's walking into a game like this. Also, I feel like there needs to be a dress code sent out to the entire league. I mean, I feel like sometimes players get in trouble for the darnest things. And then a guy walks in like this, like, what are, what are we doing? It's all around terrible fit, 4.5, most controversial. Please put on a shirt, sir. All right, and look number two, we're going with Brock Lesnar. Um, I'm just gonna go with a six out of 10 on this one. Uh, it got people talking, which is good. Uh, but at the same time, one thing I wanted to point out is he's wearing a belt, the same exact belt that he wore in the picture, look number one that I showed you guys. So I'm assuming that Dylan Brooks, to some extent, is superstitious. All right, and here's look number three. Automatic zero, he's wearing Balenciaga socks. I don't think we need to get into that. But again, he's wearing that same belt. 
Uh, the fit's not terrible, but again, because the Balenciaga socks automatic zero for everything that's going on with them. Look number four, this was in Miami. Uh, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10 for the reason that people are talking about it. Like who wears this walking into the Miami game? He doesn't know what, what season it is. And what stands out to me most about this is the fact that this man was playing on the road. So therefore he packed a go away bag and decided this is gonna be the fit that I'm going to wear walking to the stadium all around five out of 10, not my favorite. All right, and our last look here, this is the most normal one that we've seen so far, 8.5 out of 10, honestly, because this is just normal. The chest isn't showing, the legs are not out. This is a very appropriate fit for somebody thinking, I'm gonna come into the game, make an impact, et cetera. So we'll give him an 8.5. I don't wanna drag him too much here, but that's how I'd rate the Dylan Brooks outfit so far this season. Now it's time for Q&A. Thank you guys so much for dropping your questions in the community tab. I love to read those. I'm gonna pick up some ones right now that you guys had posted. So the first one, have you met any professional athletes, any cool experiences working at ESPN? So in sports betting, you don't really have access to talking to athletes for obvious reasons, but retired athletes, in case you haven't noticed, I got AI right here. I saw AI in Charlotte, met with him when I was working at PointsBet, which is really cool. He didn't really say much. We were shooting a commercial, but in terms of like interaction, I was just more so like, hey, I'm from Philly. He was like, oh, that's cool, blah, blah, like small talk. And then it's kind of like when you're on a set in a situation like that, it's kind of like leave the talent alone, leave the, leave the former athletes alone. So again, it was a high and buy, I'm from Philly type of thing, but I would say that's the most exciting professional athlete that I've met. And then in terms of some cool experiences at ESPN, I'm really looking uh, into the future to answer this because I do think there's a lot of exciting things coming up, but I'll say the most exciting times for me personally so far in my career in the 14, 15 months that I've been there, it's just when I'm in Vegas and on set with the guys. I really love the energy of that. So that'd be my coolest experience so far or uh, the doling out winners on Sports Center. I didn't know that was coming up and one day they were just like doling out winners and I was like, this is pretty cool. So I would say uh, that's some of my coolest experiences at ESPN. Have you ever had Ben & Jerry's strawberry cheesecake ice cream? Absolutely not. First of all, I don't like cheesecake, let alone putting that into ice cream. And here's the thing with ice cream, and I don't know if, some, if other people have this experience, but I had ice cream recently a couple days ago, and there's something in my family where when you have ice cream, you stay up all night hallucinating and having insane dreams. So I don't know if it's the sugar or something about ice cream, but it makes me just go out of my mind. I would say if I had to pick my favorite flavor as of the moment, it would have to be chocolate chip cookie dough. I just don't think you can beat chocolate chip cookie dough, at least in my eyes. And also the most underrated ice cream would have to be Talenti. I don't know if you're gonna consider that ice cream because I know it is gelato. I think it's the same thing, who knows? I'm not an ice cream expert, but regardless, no, I have not had that. Which then leads you to my next question, which is, Aaron, what is your favorite dessert? So basically, I'm the cookie monster. I wanna eat cookies at all time. I go to a bakery that's right by me. In fact, I walk to it. And um, yeah, every day you just try a different cookie. So I'm into cookies and that's about it. I would say ice cream, cake, mm, any, I don't know, any other desserts. I'm not really, not really a fan of. All right, this is a good question. If you won the lottery, what's the first thing you would do? The first thing I would do is collect my entire family and go MIA. I would go under a new name. I would call myself Cassie. I would move to an island and I would live on an island for the rest of my life peacefully sitting there watching the waves in a chair and just i would want to just nobody would know me nobody would know me and i would not have to worry about a cent making a cent or anything like that so i would probably go mia and i'd probably have to donate some of it too just out of good faith i feel like that's something that you just have to do all right this is another good one which major sporting event would you most want to attend it would have to be the masters for me so <laughs> I feel like people would probably think it would be a Super Bowl or things like that. I'm more of a person who likes to go to a tailgate, get a little, little, you know, nice little buzz and then go home and sit on the couch. I want access to a bathroom. I want access to water. I want access to not have people throwing things at me and yelling, yelling things. And I'm not saying when you go into an Eagle Stadium, for example, that people are just purposely throwing things at me, it, it just, they throw things at everyone. It's just like, there's beer flying, there's just a lot going on. So I would have to say, I don't even know if you would consider this like a major sporting event, but I've been wanting to go to the waste management really, really badly. I think that's like one of the most probably fun events. I've heard great things. 
Because if, you, if, if I go to something like the Masters, that'd be really cool. But then I have to stand there and be quiet. And I have to be respectful and not yell something when someone's hitting the ball. And I have to not talk. And you guys know I love to talk. So it, it would just have to be, honestly, the waste management is something I've, I've circled in my head to go actually attend. Quick hitting ones here. How far do you think the Sixers go in the playoffs? Probably the second round. Um, guys, I'm going to be honest with you as a Sixers fan. If this is not the season that they go on and win, just blow it all up. Just blow it up. Let's start over. We've been, um, the process is just uh, not processing and it's failed. So if we don't get out of the second round, we could potentially not even get out of the first round. Who knows? It's the Sixers. It's Philadelphia. We have a bad omen over us over the last couple of months. Clearly, we didn't win the Super Bowl. We didn't win the World Series. Our soccer team didn't do well. I could go on and on about that, but second round. Um, if you had to choose between LeBron or Jordan, I know you were too young for the Jordan era, but I'm sure you crunched the numbers. I am Team Jordan. I don't really think I need to get into the specifics of it, but I am Team Jordan. All right, last question here. What is your top three advice on betting? Number one, I would say follow a specific league. You cannot be good at every single league, every single game, every single team. You have to know the ins and outs to really be good at betting. Number two, I would look at lines every single morning. Wake up, look at all the lines, then you'll start to realize how odds makers set them and ways that you can try to exploit it. Or maybe you think that, for example, if you follow a specific league, specific team, oh, this line seems off to me because I know X, Y, and Z, or I've read reports of certain things. So just take a look at the lines every day to continue to learn more. Number three, which then leads me to research. Now I know in the position that I'm in, I have all day to research. It's quite literally my job to research and find picks. Some people don't have that, but honestly, it comes down to how good you are at researching and also what's your process for researching. So to be quite frank, I'm never going to post my process for how I make a pick because it's taken me three years to figure out my process. And of course you could just think, oh, well the lines are posted 50-50, you could just pick something, but it's really, it is that way, but it's also not that easy, especially when you're trying to find value and find some things that plus money. So those are my top three advices for betting. All right, guys, now what you've all been waiting for, the EKD play of the day. And thank you guys for the months that I've done it in January, as well as March for tuning into the EKD play of the day. But guys, I gotta be honest with you, doing it every single solitary day, you just can't win every day. But today, in this show, episode two, we are going with Jason Tatum over 13 and a half rebounds and assists. This game is against Philadelphia. The Celtics have been great against them, 3-0 against them straight up. But Jason Tatum, in regards to his rebounds and assists, we're combining those. He's crushed this number in all three games. 16, 17, 19, respectively. I think this number is just way too low. Philly's currently laying two at the time of this fil filming, as well as a total at 227 and a half. I'm looking at a player prop. Again, like I had mentioned earlier on the show, this time of the season for NBA, I'm looking at player props, not the spreads, not the totals. It's just really difficult. It's going to be really hard for the Celtics to win four straight on this team, but at the same time, it is possible. Anything is possible. So Jason Tatum over 13 and a half rebounds and assists as my best bet today for the EKD play of the day. Well, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the EKD Show. Second one in the books. We'll be back here next Tuesday for episode three. I hope you guys win some money over the weekend and enjoy watching the Masters and all the other sporting events that are going on. I'll see you guys back here next Tuesday. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.